The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, this is The Wrestling Life, episode 242.5. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And not a lot of time to do it, because .5 means it's a shorter episode, so we got to get right to it today. That's exactly right. We're going to put this up on YouTube first, and then after a day or so, it'll go up uh, on the podcast feed. Just experimenting, trying some different things here. Um, we wanted to do a show because, uh, Liam, it's boss time. And now, it's boss time. Yeah, Sasha Banks is a five-time Raw Women's Champion. The first ever five-time Raw Women's Champion. What a feather in her cap. Two belts, Banks, and Bailey Dose Straps. They have all the gold. Our golden role models. Uh, they certainly found a convoluted way to put the title on Sasha Banks, but as the world's self-proclaimed biggest Sasha Banks fan, boy, it was a big week for me. <laughs> well... I'm happy for you. Um, So so I I guess my thought is we did a convoluted on a finish on the pay-per-view to lead to a rematch on television and then did another convoluted finish on television to lead to, I guess, another match on the next pay-per-view. I guess. I don't know. I don't have a good answer for you. Or we just do stuff now and we don't really think about it that much, one or the other. My thought is we just kind of do stuff now because a couple of weeks ago, Kyrie Sane uh, pinned Bailey (laughs) in her last match in the company. Yeah, that's bizarre. Like everything about the way way Kyrie is leaving the company, I find fascinating that she won't, she, they put her over on her way out. (laughs) Yep. That they cut like they put up this like really really sweet video for her on on socials and YouTube and yep. had like all the other Japanese wrestlers wishing her well and her talking about her you know relatively short but full WWE career and then and then like you know it's all it's just really nice and sweet and then and then yeah she just walked off into the sunset and like three minutes after she got written off TV, she was like, all right, see you guys. <laughs> uh, yes. So I, I find everything about this bizarre. And then yes, this, the side effect of the bizarre exit of Kyrie Sane is that yes, your, your favorite wrestler is, is now a double champion. We sure do have a lot of double champions in WWE these days. Yeah. Yeah, we sure do. You know, we could, it was supposed to be a short episode, so we should probably curtail the Kyrie Sane talk. But I will, <laughs> I will say, that is like the nicest send off they've ever given anyone in terms of <laughs> that video they put up. Mm-hmm. Like, it's really bizarre. Like, it's great. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm very happy about it. It's just so not WWE. <laughs> yeah, just the idea that like they brought her back after everyone thought, or after it was sort of already known she was leaving just to have her pin the SmackDown champion and then let her walk off. I mean, obviously, yeah, they did the angle where Bailey beat her up to, I guess, get her, get her heat back or whatever, but it's still, still very strange. And, but again, not complaining. It was nice. Yeah. And, uh, Drew and Dolph had another match on raw. I guess it was okay. I don't know. My brain shuts off when I see Dolph. (laughs) They suddenly decided it was non-title, I hear. Yeah, they they uh, quietly announced that, like, the day before. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I guess because we didn't have time to do re-edits and Randy's promo specifically challenged Drew. As, I, although I feel like that's never stopped them before. Sure. Like, they all, they, they, they all the time set up title matches for pay-per-views while the world champions got to defend on TV first. So, I don't know what made this one so special, but... Whatever. Push Randy, Orton more. Yeah, Randy Orton cut a promo and said that he was better than Steve Austin and The Rock because he had more longevity and more title wins. Well, <laughs> I mean, within the fictional world, that's true, right? 
Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Sure. I mean, of all of the outlandish claims that any WWE wrestler or personality might make on a given week, that one didn't didn't set off my... Uh, I mean, it's funny to have him say that when, you know, the shows are doing record low numbers and even the people, you know, the only people holding on are the people that were 35 when The Rock and Steve Austin were... <laughs> <laughs> we're we're on the shows. Uh, they're the only ones still holding on watching. But yeah, I mean, whatever. That's I get. Yeah, within the fictional world, he has won more belts and wrestled for longer than either of those men. Yeah. So also, Ali made his uh, in-ring return on Raw on Monday, and um, he got beat by Bobby Lashley clean as a sheet. Yep, sure did. So. <laughs> How do you think they talked him into that? Because they did let him cut a promo beforehand, and I'm like, wow, they never give guys they consider geeks mic time. And he got, like, you know, a good three- or four-minute promo there, and he was good. And so do you think, like, you know, Bruce or Michael Hayes or somebody (laughs) convinced him that it was in his best interest to... uh, sure. Yeah. (laughs) You're getting getting the rub, kid. You're in there with, with a big star like Bodacious Bob. I mean... Just being in the ring will make you a bigger star with with a guy like that. And yeah, we're going to let you talk for a minute, too. Great. Tremendous. So he's dead. Uh Yeah. (laughs) Well, I mean, he slotted exactly where he was when he was on SmackDown. Like he's, you know, like that's. (laughs) Will we ever see him again? (laughs) I don't know. Like, didn't he pin MVP who may or may not be the United States champion, depending on who you ask? Yeah, I think so. So he'll come back and lose to him, and then Cruz will come back whenever he's done. Yeah, having, sure, whatever. Having COVID. You know, why not? All right, that's about all that was coming out of Monday Night Raw this week. Uh, Wednesday night stuff, I saw blurbs of what happened on NXT, but I was too busy writing 2,272 words about AEW Dynamite. Boy, did I hate Dynamite this week. What did you think of it? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was not a fan. Like it's, it wasn't like an all-time bad show to me or anything. Maybe it's an all-time bad AEW show, but um, I mean, from an all-time bad wrestling show, it's like no, it wasn't. It wasn't. I didn't really enjoy it. <laughs> I think that's what I would say. There was nothing but awful on it to me, but other than maybe Jim Ross's commentary, but um, it just wasn't that interesting of a show to me and. None of the matches really like the the outcomes of any of the matches didn't really feel like they were in doubt for the most part. So it's hard for me to get into it. And unlike with uh, you know say last week with Eddie Kingston, um, I I I don't I don't I don't want to say I don't get the warhorse thing, but like I've, I I've seen the name on Twitter. I had never seen this man seen him wrestle or anything so i didn't have any sort of emotional investment and obviously he didn't cut a promo like eddie kingston cut last week so yeah there's nothing there's nothing i like i said i didn't think it was like the the worst show ever but it did not get me particularly excited and it ended with the words the champion is going to defend against the number five contender so (laughs) i don't know like why I don't like to, again. I don't. I don't care. But you're the ones who instituted this rating, the rankings thing, right? So what? Don't just don't do that if you want to just give whoever wants a world when you just want to book a person in a world title match, or just again, it's fake. Just say they're the number one contender. <laughs> yes, it's really not all that not all that difficult, and we're not the ones that are making it convoluted. They are. Right, and again, or just have uh, Darby grab a mic after the match and say, hey, I know I'm not the number one contender, but I want a shot at you, and I want it next week, and have John Moxley, the valiant fighting champion, say, okay, I'll fight you, and I'll put the belt on the line. Like, that's... Either of those scenarios would be great, but they're like, Tony Khan has made this match between the champion and the number five contender. I'm like, well, why would Tony Khan do that? <laughs> <laughs> If there are four other people more deserving of a title match based on your own rankings. Yeah, it's pretty bizarre, man. There was a lot of bizarre stuff on Dynamite. I guess I should clarify, I also didn't think it was like an all-time bad show or anything. Mm-hmm. I just I just thought it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> the opening match was a 10-man tag. It sucked. 
<laughs> like they, they just beat on Trent Beretta forever. <laughs> uh, Luchasaurus's mask fell off. <laughs> like, <laughs> like the entire Hikaru Shida Diamante match was like a Botchamania segment. <laughs> like, yeah, it wasn't good. Diamante es no bueno. Yeah, I don't know. I feel bad. I like. I think I haven't really gotten to talk about this, but like, I think like from an in-ring standpoint, Hikaru Shida is like one of my favorite people to watch in this No Fans era because mm-hmm. I think she's really compelling and her stuff looks really good, and she has like a really good like fire up comeback that I think a lot of other people in wrestling lack when they're uh, especially for the baby faces, and I think she's great at that, and it's like. They just got nothing for her because they don't got nothing for any of the women unless maybe you're like an executive in the company <laughs> who happens to be a woman, in which case we'll make a whole tournament up for you. But for the world champion, uh, she's just kind of doing stuff. Hanging yeah. Out. Yeah. Lots of uh, interesting stuff in the women's division on this show. As we had the Deadly Draw, their version of Battle Bowl, uh, the tag team tournament for the ladies, which is going to which is going to debut on Monday on their YouTube channel. So yes, even more content, everyone. Great. And Wait, so just the draw is going to debut, or they're going to do matches. I think they're doing matches. Oh, okay. I don't know though because they they never clarified. They they tried to jam so much into this two hours this week. <laughs> like Yeah. It was wildly overwritten. Um but we we only know of it of, of two people that have drawn uh their spots in the tournament and they're the native beast Nyla Rose and the returning Ariane <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> what? <laughs> the most people? random thing. <laughs> like there are did every wrestler die in a plane crash <laughs> like of all the people on god's green earth that you're going to hire Ariane andrew i mean i i'm sure she's a very nice woman <laughs> i and, hope so and she's very i'm sure she's made a lot of good, good friends in wrestling and um <laughs> I don't know, man. It was it was very random. And I I just I have to wonder, like, it's not like she was like this big pushed star. And obviously she didn't wrestle under Ariane. Right. So I so like how many people watching this show tonight? And it was like a 10 second segment. So how many people tonight even like realized who that was or like (laughs) would care even if they did? Like, I can't think of any. Yeah. (laughs) Like, even if you do realize who it is, it's like she was a wrestling Twitter meme from her time on Tough Enough. And then she was one of known sex pest Brodus Clay's cheerleaders for a while. And then she was around for like another two years and did nothing. And then they cut her. And she, to my knowledge, has literally not wrestled one match since. So I don't, you know, don't not to be a one upper here. You're forgetting the part where she tried to pin someone while they were laying on their stomach. <laughs> I am forgetting that. <laughs> like, hmm, my lord, of all the people to bring back. Unless that's like a joke. Like when TNA uh, brought in like Ezekiel Jackson because they were because Dixie Carter was like an idiot in storyline and <laughs> thought that's what the fans wanted when they were chanting for ECW. Uh, I guess, man. That's that's a good explanation, at least. But like, if that's if that's the idea, it's like, oh, like whoever is like in storyline in charge of the AEW Women's Division is an idiot, and he's like, oh, they want <laughs> Total Divas <laughs> star Ariane Andrew. <laughs> like, can we get Eva Marie in? Let's let's just <laughs> right. Jo- I'm trying to think who like who who else was on those shows that's no longer employed by them that they can bring in. Jo- is JoJo still with the company? Uh, unclear. Eva Mendez? Yeah, yep, there we go. Rosa, Rosa Mendez. <laughs> Eva oh, Mendez. I was like, Eva Mendez. E. Torres? Like, who are you talking about? No, Eva Mendez, this... Eva Mendez is married to Ryan Gosling. Uh, right, okay. Sure. Rosa, Me- Rosa Mendez is the girl who never won a match on Raw. <laughs> right. Anyway, great rabbit trail by me here. 
Um, <laughs> Uh, just wanted to hop back to Warhorse for one second before we wrap up and talking uh-huh. about the big debut. Uh, Warhorse is like if Ultimate Warrior wasn't on steroids. Yeah, he's the renegade. I I liked him. He's not really a moves guy. <laughs> sure. His top rope elbow is a carbon copy of Shawn Michaels' top rope elbow, though. And... Yeah, that was funny because Jr. said it was Macho Man like, and I was like, that was so clearly the Shawn Michaels elbow. I don't know what you're talking about, other than yeah. that you're bad at your job. Right, and he does a double stomp, but other than that, it's just kind of about the energy and the promos. And they didn't let him cut a promo on TV; they put it on their YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, like I'm, I'm all for these guys getting chances and mixing it up and having a big variety show. I love a wonderful variety show. Like the kind Jay Leno used to do when he was on at 10 o'clock on NBC. I love a good variety show. And Warhorse could certainly bring some variety to this show. But, uh, yeah. I, 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 and, there's nothing, again, there's nothing wrong with the match. And that I like the idea of Cody just beating a bunch of indie guys. That's fine. Um, and setting up the idea that it, you know anybody can challenge for this. That's cool. That's fine. It just didn't light my world on fire. It certainly, I didn't. It wasn't as compelling as the Eddie Kingston thing again, because Eddie Kingston cut this incredible promo, and then they went out there and had a hell of a match on top of it. And here it was just no promo and a pretty good match. Right. And then Matt Cardona <laughs> debuted. Speaking of steroids. <laughs> Well, maybe he's just been eating right at home and 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 lifting weights in a in a good home gym. <laughs> maybe, or maybe, hypothetically, he took a dump truck full of steroids. <laughs> Both equally plausible. I did. I think I put this on uh, Twitter at dwl underscore podcast. But I was for just a second. I was like, oh, Matt Morgan is in <laughs> AEW. That's interesting. I was like, man, he you know he's he's enormous. <laughs> He's the. I mean, he was always a big cut dude, but he was. I mean, he he looks enormous now. Can I can I tell you, honest to God, what my thought was? Uh huh. When I saw him on the stage before they announced who it was, that is that Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> how how could it be Diesel? I have no idea. But I saw it, and in my brain, it read as Diesel. All right. So Matt Cardone is back to team. He's hired, and he's going to team with Cody against Geeks next week. You're you're a Cardona guy. What do you think of this? Yeah, I mean, so we've talked about this before on the show. I, I obviously I'm a fan of his. Um, have been for a long time. Um, I think he has value beyond whatever he can bring in the ring, which, based on his new size, might not be much. Um. But I think his value is in how he's able to market himself and market products that the company he works for sells, like toys. Obviously, he has the big action figure podcast with uh, Impact Wrestling's Brian Myers. And uh, like, so I think he has value on the, like the social media, YouTube marketing side that a lot of other wrestlers don't have. So uh, there's that. But... When we've already seen Brandon Cutler and Michael Nakazawa and QT Marshall and other folks get hired as, you know, something at least resembling more of a a straight up nepotism hire, I understand why some people would look at that and just go, oh, they just brought in another one of their buddies. Like, I get it. Like I said, I do think he adds value to your company if you're a wrestling company beyond what he can do on screen, but I totally get it if people just look at that and go, oh, Cody brought in another one of his friends. Yeah. Yep. Like, the guy, I can't add anything. Glad the guy has a job, you know? Yeah. Good times. All right, is there anything else you want to talk about here in this uh, mini episode? No, I think that, uh, that covers the thing. Oh, I do want to just mention our one NXT note for this week will be the... Uh, uh, the worst guy on that show, uh, Dexter Loomis, yeah. beat the best guy on that show, uh, <laughs> Timothy Thatcher, to uh, to go to uh, the ladder match at the at the takeover show. So that's terrible. And uh, whoever's <laughs> whoever's booking that show nowadays uh, uh, should probably be embarrassed. But hey, we're 
we are just we are married to this Dexter Loomis thing. This <laughs> twenty twenty version of a nineteen ninety four WWF superstars <laughs> character. Um, we are just married to this guy, and we're just gonna. Doesn't matter if he's the worst guy on the show. We're gonna push him, and we're gonna have him beat the best guy on the show. Because boy, we're just we're strapping a rocket to this Dexter Loomis fellow. Sounds swell. Can't wait to watch that later. All right. Uh, Till next time, everybody. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. We'll, we will be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Bye bye. I try to keep on keeping on.